When you add liquidity to Uniswap B3 Pro, the function mint will be called. So today we'll be implementing this function inside our contract. So I'm going to expand our contract and inside here, you'll create a function called function mint. What are the parameters that we'll need to pass to this function? Let's open the Uniswap B3 Pro contract again. The parameters that we're going to need are recipient, tick lower, tick upper, amount. This will be the amount of liquidity that we're adding and bytes data. This is the data to be passed to the callback, but we will not cover in our video. So the parameters that we're going to pass to our mint function are address recipient int24 tick lower int24 tick upper and uint128 amount. Again, this amount will be the amount of liquidity to add. Okay, what are the signature for the return type? The signature will be external and it has a modifier called log. This will be our reentrancy log, which we will implement later. And it's going to return returns two outputs, amount of token zero and amount of token one to add to increase the liquidity by this much amount. Returns uint256 amount zero uint256 amount one. Now the math to calculate how much amount of token 0 and token 1 to add to increase the liquidity by this much amount, we'll cover this math in a later video. In this video, what I'm going to do is mostly go over this code for the function mint, and then we'll go into the details in another video. Okay, so the first step is to implement the reentrancy modifier called lock. To implement this modifier, what we're going to do is scroll up, and then I'll define a modifier, modifier called lock, and it's going to check the boolean value unlocked inside slot zero. So say require slot zero dot unlocked, else the error message locked, and then we'll set slot zero dot unlocked to false, execute the code, and then lastly we'll unlock you again, set unlocked to true. Okay, so this is our reentrancy guard which we put it on the function mint. Let's go back to Uniswap B3 pull contract and see what code we need to implement into our mint function. So the first thing that we'll need to do is require that the liquidity amount is greater than zero. Require amount greater than zero, else let's say amount is equal to zero. And then it calls an internal function called modify position. The position is defined by the owner, tick lower, tick upper, and liquidity delta. The amount of liquidity in between tick lower and tick upper. At a high level, when we call this function modify position, it will save this information as a position and it will also calculate the amount of token 0 and token 1 that's needed to add this much liquidity. So I noticed that it returns three outputs by calling the function modify position. So I'll say ignore the first output. The second output will be the amount of token zero that is needed, int 256 amount zero int, and int 256 amount one int. Notice here that amount zero int and amount one int are not uint, they are of type int 256. This means that these numbers can be negative, and why would it be negative? Well, it will be negative when liquidity delta that you see over here is negative. In other words, when we remove liquidity, liquidity delta will be negative, and therefore these amount 0 int and amount 1 int will also be negative. However, since here we're adding liquidity, amount will be positive, liquidity delta will also be positive, so the amount of token 0 and amount of token 1 that is needed to add liquidity will also be positive. So say modify position, and then pass in the struct, modify position params, and inside here, pass in owner will be recipient from the input, recipient. Tick lower will be tick lower. Tick upper will be tick upper. And liquidity delta, liquidity delta. This will be, we need to cast amount into int256 and then cast it to int128. And to do that, we'll have to say int256. To cast amount to int256, we first need to cast it to uint256, say uint256 amount, and then cast it to int256, and then cast it to 2int128. So far, we have not implemented this function modify position. We have not defined a struct modify position params, 
And we also need a library that will cast int 256 to int 128. So let's just go define a function called modify position and also define this modify position params struct and also create a library to cast int 256 to int 128. So I'll scroll up. First, I'll define a struct. Struct modify position parameters. It's going to take an address, owner. What else is it going to take? It's going to take tick lower. Tick lower is a type int 24. Tick lower and tick upper. Tick upper. And liquidity delta will be of type int 128. Int 128 liquidity delta. Okay, next we need an internal function called modify position function underscore modify position it's going to take in a single input of type modify position params so modify position params memory i'll name it params we will make this function private and it's going to return three outputs returns something that we don't know yet we'll go back to our uniswap b3 code in a second the next output will be int 256 amount 0 and the last one will be int 256 amount 1 Okay, let's go back to Uniswap BT Pro contract and check what this first output should be. So here's the function modify position. The first output is called position info storage position. And what is this position.info? Well, I'm gonna open the library and then scroll down to position. And the struct that it's returning for the first output is position info. So what we're going to do is we're gonna copy this and then we'll also declare the same struct inside our library. So back inside our code, open div, create a new file called position.soul, and then paste the struct copied over from Uniswap B3 code. For now, we won't worry about the data that is stored in this struct mean. Okay, the next step is to go to our contract and then import the positions library. So say import from div import position.soul. And then going back here, you'll say position.info storage. And then I'll name this position. Now inside this function modify positions, we don't have any return statements yet. So let's say returns position. We'll work on it later. And amount zero for now, we'll say zero. And for amount one, we'll also say zero. Position has to be a storage state variable. So let's create a storage state variable over here. Let's say mapping from bytes 32 to position.info public positions. This bytes32 is some kind of ID and it maps to position.info. Going back to here, for now let's say positions bytes32 of 0. This should be a return, so I'll remove the S. Okay, that completes the internal function modify position for now. What else do we need to do? We need a library that will cast int 256 to int 128. So going back to our Uniswap v3 pool contract, how is this done? Scrolling up, it declares a library called safecast for int 256. So what is this library? Gonna go inside the library folder and open safecast. Inside here, it has a bunch of functions that will cast one type of number to another type. We'll just copy this over to our code. Inside div, I'll create a file called safecast.soul. Declare the header, and then going back to safecast from Uniswap v3 code, copy this, paste it here. Okay, the next step is to import this safecast into our contract. At the top, I'll say import from the safecast.soul. And then inside here, we'll say using safecast for int 256. Okay, are we done? Scrolling down to our mint function. It looks like so far we are done. Let's try compiling this contract. Open my terminal and then type forge build. Okay, our contract compiles. Let's move on. What else do we need to do for the mint function? After we call the function modify position, this function will return the amount of token zero and token one needed to increase the liquidity by this much amount. Next step is to cast this amount that was returned into uint. And then the last step is to transfer the tokens. Here the transfer is done by first checking the balance of token 0 and token 1 and then calling the callback. This callback will send the tokens into this contract and then checking the balance afterwards. For our contract, we'll keep it simple and then just simply do a ERC transfer from. So inside our code, 
you'll say amount 0 is equal to uint256 of amount 0 int and the same for amount 1. Amount 1, amount 1 int. And then the last step of our code is to transfer the tokens. So I'll say if amount 0 is greater than 0, then IERC20 token 0 dot transfer from transfer from message dot sender to address this for the amount amount 0. And then we'll do the same for amount 1. If amount 1 is greater than 0, transfer token 1, transfer from message.sender into this contract for amount 1. And that completes our mint function. Let's try compiling a contract. Type forge build again. Okay, I have not declared the IERC20 interface, so I'll go do that right now. Open my file navigator, and inside source, I'll create a new folder called interfaces. And inside here, I'll create IERC20.soul and then paste the standard interface for IERC20. Going back to the clamp contract, we'll import the IERC interface. So say import from interfaces import IERC20 dot so. Okay, let's try compiling the contract again. And the contract compiles. So in this video, we implemented the mint function. However, we still have not yet implemented the function modify position. We'll implement this function in an upcoming video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.